Hey Church, my name's Eddie and it's my privilege to bring part four of the Home series. So I'm sure if you're anything like me, you've been encouraged and challenged by the series so far. And my privilege is to talk to us uh, today about a home of growth. I don't know what your view of lockdown is. I don't know if you're looking at it through a lens of fear or frustration, whether you're loving it, whether you're a bit blasé towards it, whether you are loving this plan B in lockdown or whether you are hating this plan B in lockdown. What I want this morning is for us to be encouraged and challenged by scripture, that we might begin to look at our circumstances through the lens of scripture, that scripture begins to determine our expectation rather than our circumstances determining our emotions and our expectations of what we're going to go through. So in just a moment, I'm going to read from a passage, just two verses, 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. But before we get to that, I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you that your word is light to us. Thank you that no matter how rocky the path may be, how uncertain our footing may be, your word is the lamp that we need. And God, I ask that today you will illuminate our steps by your word. Father, will you, by your Holy Spirit, set an assurance within our hearts that your word has spoken into these days, that your word has set us up that we might be able to journey through, that we might live big, even through this lockdown period, for the glory of Jesus Christ. So guide us and lead us. May it be your word that remains in our hearts, in Jesus' name. Amen. So 1 Peter 1, verses 1 and 2, um, reading from the Passion Passion Translation. And it says this, From Peter, an apostle of Jesus, the Anointed One, to the chosen ones who have been scattered abroad like seed, into the nations living as refugees, to those living in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and throughout the Roman provinces of Asia and Bithynia. You are not forgotten, for you have been chosen and destined by Father God. I love that thought. You are not forgotten. You are not forgotten, for you have been chosen and destined by Father God. Within our household, uh, we are doing home education for our children. And and part of the challenge that's been set for myself is to create this little nature garden at the back of our garden. So a little area about four foot by four foot. Nicole told me what it is that we wanted. So we wanted plants and a little bug hotel. So the plants that will attract butterflies and bees so the kids can have a look at an ecology in action. So being a good obedient husband, I did exactly that. I've gone online, bought a pond. So we've dug the pond, we've put the pond in, some friends have given us some critters from their pond. So that's now uh, alive and well at the bottom of the garden. But now I've started doing the research and buying the plants and buying the seeds. So I've chosen the plants and the seeds. I've paid for them and I'm waiting for them to come through. I wanna say to you, even from this little passage of scripture, you are not forgotten for you have been chosen. In the same way I have chosen these plants, I've chosen these seeds, and I am waiting each morning for them to come through the letterbox or be delivered by some courier, because I am not gonna forget them. I've paid for them. They are mine by right. I am watching out for them because I I wanna plant them. I wanna see the kids enjoying this garden that I've got in my mind to grow for them. In the same way, God sees you. You are not forgotten. You have been chosen. Anybody of whom is hearing these words, you need to know this. You have been chosen by Father God. You have been purposed by Father God. And the cost was high. He sent his son for you. His son died for you. His son was resurrected so that we can have life in God, that we might fulfill the purpose he's got for us because we are not forgotten. Even within within this passage, we read about how the Christians were scattered around We may be scattered, but we're not forgotten. We're not lost. My kids, some of the things that we've um, been doing is these little seed balls that you put out into the garden. Every day they're going out. Every day they're looking in the soil to see, are these plants growing? Have these seeds begun to, to, to come through? Are they breaking through the soil? Where are they? Where did we put them? Did we put them here? Did we put them there? Where are they? They, they? They're scattered all around this little area, but they're not forgotten. They've been chosen and they're not forgotten and they, be un- and they are being looked out for. And no matter where you find yourself in, no matter what your circumstances, whether in lockdown you're feeling alone or actually you're feeling really connected, God is looking out for you. God has got a great plan for you. He has planted you. He has sown you. 
So though we are, sc though we are scattered, we've been sown. And the reason why we're sown is to be grown. And within this season that we find ourselves in, this is a fantastic opportunity for us to grow personally, for us to grow to live big in all that God has got for us. Uh, I have, uh, like I say, I've been doing the research, looking at the plants to get, and, and what's fascinating, I had no idea how plants arrive in the post. And uh, so I can show you just here, this is a, um, a plant plug that gets sent through. So you can see there, I have no idea what this plant is. Uh, it's just going to be one that has lots of flowers and apparently bees and butterflies will really like it. And it comes in one of these trays. So the plant comes as a little plug. You then kind of bed it or put it in a pot so that then it can grow and it can thrive in that. Now, actually this plant is, is like, it's taught me quite a few little lessons how they've arrived because although it's in this tray, although it can survive because there's light and there's a little bit of moisture, it's never gonna thrive. So its purpose, one of its purposes is photosynthesis. So the way that it creates energy so that it can live and grow is through light and water. And this tray provides that, but it's never gonna grow to the degree that it could. It may just about survive. In fact, even looking at this one, it looks like it's just about to tip over the edge. So within the tray, it can survive, but it will never thrive. And I wanna challenge us that actually in this season, God is doing something where he is moving us so that we will be moved into a place where we thrive rather than just survive. Perhaps the tray is a good analogy of church. Perhaps the tray is an analogy of us doing our gifts and our skills within the safety and the sanity of our routine. But actually, God has got something a little bit more dangerous for us. God has got something a little bit more challenging for us. And that's a season of growth. That's a season where we get taken out of our tray and we get planted. Because we're not forgotten, we're seen. We've been chosen and now we're going to be planted because we're sown to be grown. And God wants to grow every single one of us. As we grow, there'll be conflict. As the roots begin to push out from this little plug, there's going to be conflict. You might be looking at me, if, if you know me, you'll notice that there's a, a degree of more growth that's taking place on my top lip. And there is a conflict that takes place, even in my mind with this small bit of growth. Number one is like, do I look more like Ned Flanders or Borat? That's the kind of conflict that's going on. And maybe you want to just put in the comments which one you think. Maybe you might just want to say it should go or the rest of the beard should be allowed to grow. So there's conflict even with growth like that. How much more conflict will there be when we want to grow in the purpose and the plan of God? How much more conflict will there be in ourself where it is that God has planted us to begin to push out our roots? How much more conflict will there be when we want to change the way in which we are looking at our circumstances to bring them more aligned with what God says than what our circumstance is trying to say to us? How much conflict will there be when we're trying to address agendas or we're trying to address habits or we're trying to change the way that we think through the renewing of our mind? The conflict of these roots trying to, trying to make their way I want to encourage you that God has promised he that started a good work in you will bring it to completion. That though there may be conflict today, though it may be a time of struggle, it is through those struggles, through the rep of that struggle, where you grow in your strength. It is through the pushing through in the circumstances that we find that we will grow into a new purpose that was beyond our wildest dreams. I've been really encouraged by the uh, stories of our kids' teams. Um, I don't know if you know this, but what they've been trying to do is obviously they can't run the, the children's provisions currently. So they've been ringing all of the households of the kids uh, that come along. And they've been having like a, a few moments with the, with the children on the phone, but the children generally aren't overly interested in having that conversation. So the kids' team have been speaking to the parents. Some of these parents have never stepped foot inside of church. They drop their children off at the door and they pick them up at the end. And actually the kids' teams have begun to have some phenomenal conversations with them. Conversations which have led them to pray with them over the phone. Conversations of which have been stretching 
for the team. Because the team were really good in their tray. We've got fantastic kids and youth workers, but God's wanting to take the tray away and plant them and challenge them to grow in a new way. And maybe you're a part of our church or of any church and you're just hearing this at this moment. And you're thinking, oh, I long for the old days. I long to be back on the front door. I, I long to be helping with the offering, serving communion. I long to be preaching again in front of people. And God is saying, actually, in this time, in this season, I've got a time for you to grow. I've sown you to grow you in this season. And so it might be a stepping away from what we're used to, a stepping away from where our natural comforts are, because this is a time for us to grow. This is a time for us to thrive in God. This is a time for us to be living big in lockdown because perhaps we've been really good in our one or two skills, in our giftings, but there's been other gifts that we've been able to hide because these have thrived so well. And God is taking away the tray because he's wanting these other gifts. He's wanting these other purposes to be brought out in your life. So church, I hope you're encouraged by the scriptures this morning. You are not forgotten. You never have been and you never will be. Maybe you prayed something as a four-year-old and you find yourself now in your 40s, 50s, 60s. That prayer still resonates over you. God still remembers that prayer. He hears it daily and he looks over you. You have not been forgotten. You are chosen. And because you are chosen, you have been sown to be grown. There is terrific purpose in everybody of whom is hearing my voice. There is a God purpose inside of you. And God is looking to bring that purpose out. God is looking for that purpose to grow and to thrive so that you can take your part in this great, great adventure of life. So I want to pray. Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness to us. Thank you that we can simply say, God, here I am. Here I am. Use me. Speak to me. Whatever it is, here I am. And God, thank you that you are faithful. You don't turn your back on any kind of a prayer like that, but that you are longing to be involved. And so, God, we give you our lives afresh. In Jesus' name. Amen.